Today we're going to be working on free body diagrams. A free body diagram, which is also sometimes called a force diagram, is a picture that you use to analyze the forces acting on a body. The free body method works as follows. First, you pick the object that you're going to be calculating the forces on. Then, you pick a convenient coordinate system. After that, you find all the forces that are currently acting directly on the object. That is to say, forces specifically working on the object. So that does not count forces that the object is exerting on something else, or forces that are not being exerted on the object. Um, then, you make a drawing. You don't have to make a drawing, but it helps. Then, after that, you write down all the forces. And then finally, the sum of the forces is just equal to the mass times the acceleration. All right, so let's work through an example. Let's consider the simplest possible um, situation. This is a person standing on level ground. And for a person standing on level ground, there are two forces that are relevant to them. One of those forces is gravity. And that force, which of course is the force that's being exerted by the Earth on this person, pulling them towards the Earth, is pulling them down. The other force is the force that the ground exerts on this person and pushes them up, and that is called the normal force. And when we look at this, those are the only two forces that are relevant to this problem. So now, what we're going to do is turn this into a free body diagram. We choose to represent the object in our free body diagram by a box. You could do whatever you want, but this is relatively simple, and it doesn't confuse the picture. So now, what we're going to do is pick a coordinate system. Since it's a person standing on a flat ground, then the logical thing to do is choose your coordinate system so that it's aligned with that person. So our x direction is going to be along the direction of the surface, and the y direction is perpendicular to that. And that's going to give us a coordinate system where all of our forces are acting in the y direction. Then, we've already discussed our forces. There's two. There's gravity, which points down. And gravity really is the weight of the object, which is just mass times gravity, the mass of the object times gravity. The other force is the normal force. And that is where it goes. It points upwards. And they point in opposite directions. And we know that these are the only two forces that are acting on this object. We also know that it's sitting still. So now what we can do is, now that we've drawn the forces and all that stuff, we can say that the sum of all of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. And so the sum of all of the forces in the x direction, we already know, is equal to zero. The sum of all of the forces in the y direction is going to be equal to the normal force pointing in the positive y direction minus mass times gravity, because that's pointing in the negative y direction, and that is going to be equal to zero. And so, because we know that the object is standing still, uh, is not moving, so that the uh, there's no acceleration. And so from that, we see that this is the only equation that matters at all. And so, we see the normal force minus mg is equal to zero. And from this free body diagram, you can immediately see that the normal force is just equal to mass times gravity. Now what we're going to do is consider a slightly more complex situation. And here we have a person standing on a hill, motionless. And so now this is instead of standing on a horizontal surface, this person's standing on a hill. And so there are going to be three forces that are important. And one of those forces is going to be the same as before. It's going to be gravity. And gravity is pointing down. And we're just going to use W to say gravity. Then there is the normal force. Now, the normal force is always perpendicular to whatever surface you're thinking about. So instead of it being vertical, it's going to be pointing perpendicular to the hill, so it's going to be pointing in this direction. And then, since this person is uh, motionless, that means that there's a third force that we have to worry about, and that force is friction. And of course, friction is what keeps us from 
you know, uh, sliding down hills uh, without stopping. And so the force of friction opposes motion or the potential for motion. And since we're sitting still, the natural thing to do would be to slide down the hill. So the force of friction opposes that. So it points up the hill in this direction. Now, those three forces all point in, uh, you know, don't point uh, necessarily in the x or the y direction as we talked about before, so we need to choose a new coordinate system. And so in this case, what we're going to do is choose a coordinate system that's aligned with the surface of the hill. So what we're going to do is pick one that looks like this. So my x-axis points in that direction, and my y-axis points perpendicular to the surface. And that way, at least some of my forces line up with the axes. Oh, and also, by the way, we're going to say that the hill makes an angle theta with respect to the horizontal, and that's going to help us out a little bit in just a moment here. All right, so now we've picked our object, we've picked our coordinate system, and we found all the forces that are currently acting on the object. So now it's time to actually come up with that free body diagram. So here's our free body diagram. Let's get going. So as before, we've chosen to represent our object by... Uh, a rectangle and recall our x-axis points along the slope and our y-axis points perpendicular to the slope and so let's draw some forces so the first force we're going to draw is the normal force and the normal force points straight up or as straight up as I can possibly draw then the frictional force points up the slope which is this direction Remember, the x-axis is aligned along the slope. And then here comes the tricky one. The weight in this coordinate system points off at an angle. And remember, weight is just equal to mass times gravity. And the angle that it points off at is the angle of the slope. So this is theta. And so that's convenient because we know that in the y direction, the uh, component of the weight along the y direction is w cosine theta. And in the x direction, it's just going to be w sine theta. All right, so now let's get started with writing down our forces. So if this is sitting still, we know the sum of all of the forces in the y direction have to be equal to 0. And we know similarly that the sum of all of the forces in the x direction must be equal to 0. And so in the y direction, we know that it is the normal force pointing in the plus y direction minus w cosine theta. And that is going to be equal to 0. And then we know that w is just mg. So we know that the normal force minus mg cos theta is equal to 0. So we know that the normal force in this case is just equal to mg cosine theta. Make that so it's a little more legible. OK. And so in the x direction, we know that the two things that are pointing in the x direction are the weight, or the one component of the weight. And that's going to be w sine of theta minus the frictional force, which points along the negative x direction. And that is just equal to 0. And so we know that the frictional force is then going to be equal to w, or mg, sine of theta. And so from that, we know that based on the weight, we can calculate what the normal force is going to be up here and what the frictional force is going to be down here. And if I had asked some other questions about this, um, you know, for example, how does the frictional force and the normal force relate, you could quite easily do that as well. So that's it for free body diagrams. Thank you very much.